In today's video, I want to turn this turbo fuel plant into And there we have it. By coincidence, it literally took us 69 hours to design this place. And uh, that, like I said, was just so coincidental. It, we was just there on the live stream. And I was like, how many hours have we we spent on this now? And, and it was literally around 62, 63. And I was like, maybe we, if we just get it and just do four more final tweaks, we can actually push it to 69. And we, we did. So it's a nice but uh yeah it's 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 a big thing and it is very very design heavy especially this early on in the playthrough ignore the window there I'm, i'll just quickly just run through there a second ago but it does kind of remind me of a heat sink i'm loving the whole copper pipes and all that kind of stuff and yes i will get to showing you how we did this in a minute but if you want to see every minute every second of how i built this if you want to watch the whole 69 hours be my guest because when you go to my youtube channel all you need to do is just click on the live category here and you can see all the past broadcasts literally since we played the start of the 1.0 playthrough and you can go through here you can check them all you can just see everything we're doing because this whole playthrough is live streamed live because we're currently in a marathon stream but i just wanted to quickly show you like just the entrance here this is where we we get into the building um i love the whole uh, aesthetics with the smoke coming out the refineries to the left and the right the colors the mercy spheres just you know sitting on top of these little um what we kind of call them little, little stands um the whole purple and red and blue lighting uh with the green mixed in it looks very 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 nice and um i gotta say i do love the new coppers i i think this is going to be kind of the design we're going to kind of go through in regards to this playthrough and uh i think it's time i take this now back to past me who shows you how we kind of did this because this whole plant is not just making turbo fuel it's actually making diluted fuel now and it's also making recycled plastic and recycled rubber so past me take it away thanks future me and uh welcome to the pre-build of the heat sink turbo plant yeah this is very bare bones as you know i like to do the production first and then start working on the design for those who have watched the previous episode we kind of go over about the heavy oil residue that is coming in from four crude oil lines which are when i'm when i mean four crude oil lines that is four 600 lines each of them crude oil lines go into a row of 20 uh, refineries which is one here two there and we've got two on the opposite side these two right here are going to be going upstairs which you can see via these pipes towards the turbo fuel which is being made in this room up here this is the heavy turbo fuel alternate recipe and inside this room it's well it doesn't look like this today but this is making i believe 1280 turbo fuel this whole system this whole production is not optimized yet and this is going into these fuel generators over here, which we have uh, 80 on the bottom row, 85.333 on the bottom row, and 85.333 on the top. And that is obviously making us around, I believe, 42,000 megawatts, roughly around that area. We've also got the compacted coal over in this section, because obviously we need compacted coal for the heavy alternate uh, recipe, which you can see right here. Heavy oil residue and compacted coal equals turbo fuel. And we're bringing in the sulfur and the coal. We have one coming in via the train line. And we have sulfur coming from over there. And we also have coal coming from over in that direction. Then the, all, all that comes into here with a compacted coal. And the compacted coal then goes over to them. And then that is really it. But now we're wondering what we want to be doing with this heavy oil fuel uh, heavy oil residue because we are bringing in the two additional crude oil lines to make this so i decided that why do we not turn this into fuel and then that fuel can then be consumed with rubber or plastic to make the recycled alternate recipes because if we go into a refinery here and we look at let's say the recycled rubber it requires 30 plastic and 30 fuel and that goes in to make 60 rubber but we need a starting point 
And that is because we need to get rid of the resin that is being uh, produced in both of these systems as a byproduct. Because again, the heavier your residue recipe sends out resin as a byproduct as well as the heavier your residue. So all the resin that this line, this line, that line over there, that line over there is all going to merge together and go and make us plastic or rubber. But right now they're just currently being sunk so the heavier your residue can be sent upstairs to give us the power. Otherwise, if this is not being sunk, it'll back up all the machines. No heavy oil residue is being made, which means no fuel. But I also started working on this, which was just turning a few of the resin into plastic into all of these, because we're going to need these canisters right here for this section, because this section is making us diluted packaged fuel, which requires water. So if we look at the main recipe, so we can see diluted packaged fuel comes into here. It requires heavy oil residue and packaged water. So let's just reverse a little bit and go into this machine because this is a packager that is making packaged water. So we're bringing in the water. We are then getting the empty canisters, which we are bringing over from here. And all we need to do is just fill all of these machines up. This will then make the packaged water at 100 per minute because I've overclocked these. This then goes into here and consumes the 100 packaged water as well as 50 heavy oil residue to make 100 package fuel that 100 package fuel then goes into another packager over here which is going to unpackage the uh, fuel to make fuel at 100 and empty canisters at 100 and because this is outputting 100 canisters if we go underneath the empty canisters will come back into this to make a recyclable loop so we can get this in a constant chain around here so 100 goes in 100 goes in here, 100 goes in there, 100 spits out, goes under the ground, and then we have a recyclable loop. Which means we don't need to keep making constructors, or keep making canisters, sorry, to go down here into all of these. So you might as well recyclable it. Recyclable it? That's not a word, is it? It's a, re <laughs> it's a recycled loop. And then that fuel then merges together. So again, with all my videos, make sure you only look at the one side, because this side is just a duplicate. So all of this is making a little bit of fuel. And now we need to get this fuel and turn it into recycled rubber or plastic. So the first thing we're going to do is we have the resin from over this side of the factory. That resin needs to come in and be consumed. So if we look at doing the maths here, let's grab this just refinery here. And we are going to make residual rubber. And we are bringing in, if I'm not mistaken, 1,600 resin. So 1,600 resin is going to get consumed in here with water. We don't need to look at the water as a number right now. But 1,600 divided by 40. So 1,600 divided by 40 is 40 refineries. Then 40 refineries are going to make 20 rubber. So 40 times 20 is going to be 800 rubber. Then we have the 800 rubber that's going to be coming out of 40 refineries. And that's going to go into the recycled plastic. And that requires 30 rubber and 30 fuel. So 30 rubber, so 800 rubber divided by 30. So 800 divided by 30 is going to be 26.666 refineries. And that is going to output 60 plastic. So we've just doubled what we've already been making. So if we go into 60 plastic, that is going to then go into times by 60. It's going to make 1,600 plastic that 1600 plastic will then go into to make recycled rubber so 1600 plastic divided by 30 now is 1600 divided by 30 is now 53.333 refineries to make rubber and then that rubber so a 53.333 times by 60 again is now 3200 rubber then that 3200 rubber then goes back to the recycled plastic to make 60 plastic per minute so then again we do 3200 divided by 60 is then gonna be wait yeah no divided by 30 is 106.666 and then we times that by 60 that's gonna be 6000 400 plastic but we do have a limitation because all of that does require fuel as well 
And unfortunately, we don't have all the fuel being made here. So all of the fuel that's being made, that is our limitation, is we are going to consume as much fuel as possible to go into as many refineries in a very long straight row that way. And yes, we are going to be going over the void uh, because why not? But also, you've got to remember, that is a lot of machines that we need to put down. So I do feel like all of the um, power shards that I've been collecting, I've got four here, I've got 52 here. I do need to go on another spree, but that is something that you guys can skip because I do need to go on quite a bit of adventure to get a lot of power shards. And then what we're going to do is because uh, the, the base recipe we're starting with is the uh, residual rubber, that is going to require 40 machines. So we might as well bring that down to 20 and do a 20 line and a 20 line. No, sorry, a 10 line and a 10 line. Yeah, that's right. So we're going to do a 10 line of um, refineries on the right side, 10 line of thing on the left side. And that is what you saw a minute ago with the entrance of the turbo, uh, the heat sink turbo building. And uh, yeah, well, I best now pass it over to recording bits who recorded everything for you to uh to crack on with this whole build because i'm recording this on the uh the 28th of september and obviously i recorded everything of me recording this whilst i was doing the marathon right so i've got the refineries down and what we're going to do is we're going to put 10 on this side and 10 on that side all of these are then going to merge in the middle right here and this is going to be making 400 rubber on this side and 400 rubber on this side uh, we have got the recipe in here, so we need 80 polymer resin and 80 water and the rubber to come in this side. So we are on Mark 4 belt, so obviously 10 times 40 is going to give us 400, so we're fine for capacity. This rubber is then going to make its way underneath all of these pipes right here, onto what we have... I will have just cleaned this whole section because it was way too crazy. Um, and um, all that rubber is then going to make its way down here and into a straight line just that way and then oh boy i'm gonna regret it because the amount of support work i'm gonna have to do for the building that's gonna hang off the cliff is gonna be crazy because if you don't know i'm gonna have to build a lot of bloody refineries but with all the plastic that we're going to make i am kind of wondering if we should kind of reserve some of that plastic and make some extra rubber on top and then i guess maybe in the next video we need to work on the world highway because the world highway is going to be something we're going to need very very early on and because it's going to be an infrastructure that we utilize because if you've seen mark 2 at mark 2 in season 2 we built the world highway all right so editing bits here i've literally completed the world highway as of yesterday there's some final touches that need to be done and uh, oh boy you better believe we've gone bigger than what we did in season 2 because we've got a bottled water plant to build again and uh, so much stuff we have to do but as you can see, I've already done four lines on the top and I've done a couple of lines underneath and we're still keeping with the whole copper and kind of like silver and all that kind of stuff vibes. But here's a little teaser in what's to come in the next video, but also all of these blueprints, which you can see right in here, will be available for free in the Discord. So check out that in the description and the next video will be going through how to connect all of these with curves, how to do them up on ramps down ramps uh, like i said how to connect them with curves and how to make sure you can use this to your advantage in your world so that will be in the next youtube video which hopefully will be out sometime this week before the 10th of october but the 10th of october is next week but hopefully i get it done by the, the 6th or so. i don't know i've lost days this marathon stream has made my days and weeks just go kaput Right, so with all the rubber now powered and connected, we are now making the 400 rubber and 400... Well, sorry, 400 rubber on either side up. I've also just made it uh, as a safety precaution that we get the resin just sunk in case there is a problem along this line. Because as you know, I am a person who plays Satisfactory that likes to stress test before we move on to a next uh, section of the build because you don't want to build too much and the next thing you know you find out you've done your maths wrong on a couple of refineries before you've got a belt missing and especially because we are in the power infrastructure building we don't want anything to back up because if, if we back up that could cause a few more days on top of the manifolds filling or especially the power gens at the end to fill up because we don't want that so 
with that now being running, the, we've got uh, resin coming up on this side. I've not set up the resin, button, resin on this side, but if we come down here, you probably noticed as well, I have now added a few little resource sinks. And these resource sinks are just bringing that rubber down here. And again, just stress testing it. Because the way I do these awesome sinks is imagine if all this rubber is coming down here and it's being consumed at 100% efficiency in a factory down here. This is what this is imitating. This resource sink is just pretending that it's going into a factory at 100% to make sure all the machines before it are running optimally. And as we see here on the refineries, there was a couple of yellow lights. And this could be due to multiple things. This could be just due to the machines have not filled up yet. But this also then could mean we're not making enough resin and there is a problem back here. And because of that, that means we might go down here and diagnose another problem and uh, find out all that kind of stuff. Because I love, again, diagnosing problems in Satisfactory. So we can see this is now coming up yellow. So let's find out why. And we can see it's not receiving enough crude oil. And that is a big problem for our fuel plant. So now we find out why we're not receiving enough crude oil and diagnose that problem and then fix it. So you just kind of do this at stages and uh, to find out why these problems are persisting and uh, it will help you in the long run. So please trust me on that. It definitely works. And just remember, just to just to give Show Bob some love in the comments. Because as always, if you're enjoying these videos, remember to like, subscribe and also leave a comment, even if it's just a bloody emoji. So the next step now is to get this rubber up and then to get this rubber being consumed over here after I've diagnosed these problems because all of this rubber will then go into some refineries. So let's grab a refinery. And um, as we already know, we need to do like, is it 26.6 machines? It's something on the lines of that. So we're going to work on one line only. So you're going to see me not calculating or doing any calculus on this side. We are going to get the rubber, which is 400 coming down this line. So 400 divided by 30 is going to be 13.33333 machines. And as we can see in here, we're going to be making the recycled plastic. And that's going to be 13.333 machines. And then 13.333 times by 60 is going to be 800 plastic. And that side's going to be 800. And again, all of that will be doubled on this side because... I'll, I, since 1.0 has come out, I've been getting so many questions about bits. How do you not get so overwhelmed when you're buildings? Because you do a large amount of buildings. And I just tell people all the time, all you need to do is focus on one line, one section, one half of the pie. And this is my half of the pie. This one line right here. Ignore this side. This side is the all that matters. Because if we put down a split down the page right here, everything on this side is the same as this side. So fix this problem first and then duplicate it on this side. But also, as of lately, I've been telling people how if you're bringing in, you know, how, how do I optimize a, 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 a crude oil line? The first thing I said was bring in a pipe. Just bring in one pipe, Mark II pipe and Mark one, either full of 300 oil or 600 oil. Get that pipe and just do one line with it. Make that oil into something. Then turn them uh, them items into something. But at each stage, stress test. Get a heat sink, uh, heat sink, a resource sink down, or a buffer if it's liquid. And if it is a buffer, put down a few, and every so often, just flush the whole network and allow the solids and the liquids to be flushed. You can stress test this item, uh, this, this line, and figure out why it's not optimized. And then, you can then fix it and then build, then duplicate it, then duplicate it for how many times you want with the amount of resources you want to bring in. So now we need to put down 13.333. But for design purposes, I think I want to create this into a separate room here, that into a separate room. And I'm thinking about maybe making this the entrance to the building. Maybe, I don't know yet, but that is something that is on the back of my brain. So... With this being a room itself, I'm going to want doors here, which means I'm going to want a couple of spaces. So I want a walkway to potentially go along here outside of these machines, maybe a wall here, and then the refineries, which means the door could be coming along here somewhere. And then I've got to put these refineries down, which is going to be 13.333 along this side. And yes, I do need to put 13.333 along that side. Then from there, we are going to be making 800 plastic. I'm thinking about only consuming half of the 800 plastic and sending that down and then maybe making 13.333 plastic, uh, sorry, rubber. 
There, there is a lot of plastic and rubber rotations here. You, you just got to bear with me on that, okay? So, sometime later, you can see I've been a little busy. I have now been adding these machines, which I've been talking about, which is the 13.3333 here. And then we've got 13.333 there. And then, down there, guess what? We've got another 13.333. Because I want to be more... I want to have more plastic than rubber. I've also now brought down the pipes, which are going into the machines. So 13.333 here. Uh, are going into here. We have 200 rubber and 30... Uh, sorry, three, 30 rubber and 30 fuel going in with 60 plastic coming out. So we have the two 400 lines. So as you can probably tell, I've done a little bit of a load balancing system right here. And what this does... It brings in the first six machines right here onto one line, which is 360. Then we have another six, which go onto another line to make 360. But bits, you must say, you said you were going to have 400, two 400 lines. Well, that's where this last machine comes in. Because we have 13 machines, if we go into this, and this one is overclocked to the 33.333, we needed extra because we needed... 13.333 machines, right? And this one's outputting plastic. So what I've got, I've got this plastic coming out of here and it's being smart split right here. We have uh, 40 going that way and 40 going that way. 40 is then going onto this belt and then 40 is then going on to this belt right here, which comes over a lot. So they are then load balanced to have 40, uh, sorry, 400 and 400 on this one. Then we have 400 going into this machine. If you notice, we've now getting a similar pattern with this system over here. This needed 400 on the input to go into 13.33 machines. So then I did the same thing. I got this plastic down here to go into 13.333. And now it's just a repeated pattern. We then send all of this on the uh, input side, which is here. And then we have another load balance system here. This then brings the 360 and then 360 down together where this end machine splits the 80 into, you know, 240s, which then merge onto them two 360s. Hopefully, I'm not confusing you. So all you need to know is two 360 lines are coming down here. This one is splitting into two and sending 40 onto one belt, 40 onto the other. If that is made into simple terms. Then I've got the 400 rubber that's been additionally made going... Well, it's going to go straight around here, actually. Uh, but the 400 rubber here is then going into, guess what? Another 13.333. We're not going to scale this to the maximum just yet because I just want enough plastic and some rubber that we can ship from this building to more than likely an electronics factory. Because the electronic factory is going to be something we need, which is going to need computers. It's going to need supercomputers, AI limiters. It's going to need Caterium. It's probably going to need um, uh, quartz crystals. That means we need quartz going in there and silica being made. We're also going to need wire and cable and quick wire and uh, so many electronic stuff is probably going to get made in there and we're going to need plastic for that we're going to need circuit boards and high-speed connectors but i've not decided where we need that because before that we need the world highway and the world highway will be the next project and um we need to ship everything around the world so i'm going to get these final pieces done which is going to get all this up and running and hopefully we can get this stress testing but now you must be wondering why have you got so many fuel generators right here well these fuel generators are going to be burning off any additional fuel that is not needed which is right here we have a 400 line here a 400 line here and a 200 line here which means sorry no a 400 line here a 400 line here and a 400 line here these are all 400 lines i'm going to get this top line i'm going to split it into two and then i'm going to stick a valve on one side and a valve on the other and we're going to limit the fuel that goes through we're going to send 200 to the right and 200 to the left because we're going to merge it with this pipe right here so 200 is going to merge in with this pipe to make a 600 and then this one over here is going to merge off into uh into 600 as well and go down into some fuel generators down there that is just going to burn off an additional fuel but yes i could turn this plastic into more rubber than that room to uh, more plastic but what i've found out is i'm actually gonna if i was to do that again I won't have enough fuel to actually turn the next stage of rubber into more plastic. And I'll have more rubber than plastic. But I want more plastic than rubber. So, let's stress test this whole system. Right, so stress testing is underway. We have everything moving down the lines. We have the excess fuel being burnt. Yes, their machines will never, ever work optimally. Um, so, 
we have all the plastic now going into here and we can see we have a 400 plastic here a 400 plastic here a 400 plastic here making a total of 1200 then we also have a 400 rubber right here also that is obviously like i said duplicated on the other side so we have another 400 rubber and another 1200 plastic making a total altogether of 2400 plastic and 800 rubber that will get sent to the electronics factory but i've been a little busy on the design aspects and yes i've utilized some blueprints in this and all of them will be available in the discord today if you are interested in picking what it's only some design ones and i'll show you what we've got we have a light pole which is what's going to go in between each refinery and all this is is just a light inside a uh, metal pillar with a small one with and a little bit of the the electric kind of gives it that little aesthetic of you know you can see kind of see them coming out the uh, thing not everything has to be hidden uh, and it kind of looks nice especially when you kind of see it you see the little electric symbol on it and you can kind of daisy chain these up if you wanted to and you can see there's a power node up there um so that is kind of what i've done with that and then you can kind of change these and uh, we also have the doors which you guys keep asking for uh, how do you make these well here is a blueprint all it is is literally two doors that allow you to do this and this was a design i learned from mr popcack a uh, another fellow streamer and uh this is a very cool way and i've done this for now a few years but this will now be available in the blueprint folder as well but not just that one we also have its bigger brother which is for trains or vehicles or whatnot and this one is mainly for trains because trucks won't fit between these but a train does um obviously if you walk towards it only the bottom one will open but the top one will stay closed but if a train goes through it it will work um and uh yeah you can get a track nice and through there and if you wanted to you could get some pillars and just cover this up um and uh basically place that there and nudge it in and then raise it up and then kind of cover these what i like to do my little rule of thumb is when it comes to these kind of doors i want to make sure when the doors are um open right is that you can just see this so this pillar is actually too far this way i want to be able to see it because it doesn't look right when they just come out of nowhere you know like but if i was to push this back a little bit you can see, kind of see where it is when it's open and that is where i'm going to put it right there so now it you can still see it right here and it just makes it look better then it just vanishing into nowhere and it just goes whoop. <laughs> another thing i've done is just a fuel generator with a connector because as you know i like to daisy chain a lot of my machines so here's just a normal fuel generator but you must be wondering what is different about this well the only thing that's different is i've added a, i've added a wall connector to the power connector right here so if you was to put down multiple fuel generators for example you'll be able to just get this and connect it to the next one and uh yeah bob's your uncle fanny's your aunt you don't need to keep going down all of these and putting a power pole putting a power pole power pole you can just grab these and daisy chain all your fuel generators and this is something that i'm probably going to do with every single building because if you look over here at my refi refineries i've done the same thing i've put a little uh connector here like this uh, at every little entrance and it looks like they're daisy chained and this is something you can do in vanilla just remember mods are not available yet and uh, i'm not going to be using any mods for this playthrough that gives us this kind of option and uh, that will be for the modded playthrough afterwards the only mods that i will be use utilizing will be um sky ui which allows me to change the time of day so you know like in these videos you're not gonna have nighttime daytime nighttime daytime and all that sort of stuff uh, but then I'm also going to have Pack Utility, which allows me to do the flying gliding shots. And yeah, I could use the in-game advanced settings and use this fly mode, but it's just too slow when I want to go from A to B and I need to get a panning shot and all this kind of stuff. So that's the only reason I utilize that one. So with them little blueprints there that I've used, uh, let's take a little walk inside here. So if we come down here, this is what I've kind of come up with so far. We have these light poles, which I was talking to you about a minute ago, with the refineries here. So this is the refinery, and here is the blueprint wall. And all I've done is I've just put these in the middle of the refineries. And then, above the lights, I've just put some wall holes here. So this has actually been fixed now. So just before the patch the other day, we was able to place these on these pillars, but we can't now. So what you want to do if you want to place them on here, you now have to grab a wall 
and place that literally against the 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 I don't know why I'm aiming at the ground. You're just aiming at the, the bloody pillar, and then and then place it there, and then grab yourself a uh, pipeline hole like that, and then remove it, and then you can just connect that to wherever you want to connect it to. You know, so that's the kind of thing, and it kind of makes it look industrially steampunky and i am going to turn these to copper so i'm going to put them to copper just to add a bit more because there's a lot of blue down here a lot of bit of steel color like as you can tell i've changed all these pipes to steel i still need to paint them ones under there in fact and then i've got these here which is just one of these new law barriers which we got in 1.0 and then we've also got these signs which you can just put along here uh, and uh these are pretty cool so i've kind of got them like this way uh, if you wanted to you can kind of just put that to the end there, just like this. And then grab that and then aim down a little bit if you hold control. And you can actually snap that into that barrier right there. So if you remove the barrier and then paint this right here and go into, let's say, red. Uh, red. And then color that. You can see that is now red. But if I put a barrier down and I just put this back here uh, like so. But <laughs> I was trying to work this out on stream. Uh, obviously, you won't have the text in the icon here, right? I was trying to work this out on stream and only to find out that two hours before I placed, I did this, Mr. Total Eclipse dropped a video on how to do this as well. So it just goes to show our brains are in sync when it comes to just satisfactory and design work. And uh, yeah, so now that we have this kind of feel to it, we've also got these pillars up here. And you must be wondering how we've done these diagonal bits as well. Well, all we've done is, is if we go up here, and uh, we go to the end of one of these framed ones. All I've done is I've just come to the end. Let me just find somewhere else to stand. Uh, and we just hold control. Hold control, it snaps to this uh, frame right here. And once you've got that, we can then go, let's say, to there. And we're just going to rotate. We're just going to go, well, hold control. And we're just going to use the mouse wheel. One, two, three. Bam. We've now got three of them, right? Three ticks. And then just a frame into there. This might not be the same as the other ones, but you just aim at the side of this one now. And then you place. And that's all you really need to do. And then you just remove that one. You remove that one. And then you just bring this in. Obviously, this is totally different compared to this one. But once you've got the angle you need, instead of building it all again to do what you need to do, just grab yourself another frame, but hold control and aim it at the edge. You see where the, the both connect here? Well, if you just aim it at the end like that, you know for a fact if you zoop that all the way through here and then you were to get another barrier and place it wherever you was to put it on here, it will be the same height as that. And then once you've got that, you know, these angles, you can just delete this whole strip just like this. But not that one. Delete the whole strip just like that. And then you've got two identical angles. So you just zoop that down there into machines or anything you kind of want and just play around with it. Just remember, utilize the connection points or the anchor points of each two buildable items. And uh, that's all I've done for that. So I did uh, I did this whole central column first, and then I was like, okay, maybe we should kind of do some form of structure inside of here. Because, yeah, it could be nice just having the, you know, the open windows at the top. Um, but then it's like, it's just a little, I want it to be, feel a bit more full, if that makes sense. And then we have these windows on the top. So you must be wondering what you're going to do with these, Bitsy. Well, if you actually grab one of these and you uh, change to another one, for example, let's go to a two meter. Aim it at that bit, right? You want to put it here. It now looks like we have an open window. So this is what I've done with this. So it looks like it's just open. It's just raised a little bit. Um, you might have seen this done before, but yeah, you can just do this over here and oh, not put that there. If you wanted, unless you wanted a reverse window. Uh, yeah, and then you can kind of just scatter these. Obviously, don't make it symmetrical because it just looks a bit weird. But scatter these like scarcely, sparsely along here. It looks, it'll look pretty nice. And uh, yeah, you know, because you, you you don't really want to put windows looking like this. It looks like wings, you know. But scatter them about. And then I need to figure out what I want to do with this whole side yet because this whole side needs to be duplicated on this side. Um, but this, this whole central column here does have it's on a segregated doorway into this chamber and we're actually going to call these chamber one two and three why one two and three because 
13.333 machines is going to be chamber one. And then we have chamber two and chamber three and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I've kind of gone with the blue lights. These do have a light switch. At the uh, at, Actually, you can see it just right there, in fact. Uh, and they do have a light switch. And uh, yeah, this is kind of coming along well. And uh, I'm going to make sure that we complete all of this and make all these into steel. You can kind of see this is a load balance kind of fuel thing here. So this right here is 200 fuel, 200 fuel merging with a 400 fuel because, you know, um, 200 has been consumed along here and whatnot. And uh, it's kind of just merging together. It's, uh, it's coming together quite nicely and we still need to do some stress testing. There's a lot more lights and things I need to f figure out and all that kind of good stuff. But things are coming along pretty nicely next i need to figure out what i do with this room and uh what i'm going to do is actually make this more of a open space room with these beams more than likely still um because i want this to kind of be like the uh like the arterial kind of main support going through the whole entire building that every room has in common um but because this beam is so room uh, so big i'm actually going to grab this blueprint and i'm actually going to paste this in here as well and place it along here more than likely put these blue lights but i want to kind of make this walkway be lit up by ceiling lights and the way i'm going to do that i think is if we actually grab a foundation and i'm going to bring the, the ceiling down of course uh, and it's going to go to about uh where's the i must have split this up a little bit so if i get this wall make that a four Hold control. Let's take that to halfway through there. And then let's say we're going to bring it to here, for example. We're going to do the same on this side. And then we're going to fill that in the middle like there also. So let's say right now we have a ceiling right here. And we want to block any light being splashed onto these machines. So if I was going to organization and put a ceiling light down, I'm then going to place it in the middle here. Just a little side note with these lights. That line right there, the one that's clipping inside of there... This one and this one does not give off light. It's this central column right here, okay? So if you was to block this center bit right here, the light will fully stop working and being cast down here. But if you was to cover these two, it would actually... Oh, sorry, these two on the left, these two on the right, it would be totally fine. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these, these little spines here all the way across, but I'm actually going to hide it underneath and have it so this one is just casting onto this walkway with at least no splash going this way onto these machines because these ones are going to be lit up blue from these ones over here so now if i go through these doors you can kind of see what i mean <laughs> i've now made the light come through here and it just shines in here yes there is a tiny tiny bit of splash going onto these machines and a little bit down here but it's fine because these lights down uh, back here are just kind of creating this little ambiance effect kind of in this room and it's uh it's looking really nice um i've also done the uh if i just turn my torch on so you can see uh i've done these kind of uh supports here with the big ones and i'm bringing in the same pipe so you can see i'm using the same aesthetics what i'm using in this corridor now and as you can tell this room has now been completed uh, because the power of editing uh, but now you can kind of see we're kind of going with these coppers the blacks the silvers the blues the purples and the greens and it's kind of reflected in here as well except we've added red in here um so yeah we've got the pipes kind of still coming in here the blues the coppers the steel pipes underneath and uh and whatnot and uh, like I said, if you just make sure that these frames allow lights to come through, which is why this is being lit up here. And then I've also created doorways that allow me to go into here. And what I've done with these, as you can tell, they are lit up. And I've reduced the splash here as well. So I didn't want this red light to be splashing onto these machines. Because if I was to remove these walls real, real quick, uh, if I was to do that, you will see the red light would... Uh, sorry, the blue light splashes into here, which we don't want. And it kind of ruins the kind of doorway entrance kind of thing uh, and it's creating very sharp angles and whatnot but as you can tell what i've done is i've just gone into here and i've placed the light inside the wall and if you go inside here this is where the wall is you kind of see the light and this light is just set to red and it just in here and uh i've hid it behind a beam just in front of these so this beam is actually hiding the big bright glare of these. So when you're running down here, all you're seeing is the cast coming down. You're not actually seeing the light itself unless you come here and look up, right? And then we're going into this room. And then this room right here, 
is uh, is still a work in progress. But if we come down this side, this is where the fuel generators are that we saw before. And what I've done is I've kind of created this, which, as you know, if you've seen my other seasons, I kind of always do these, put these little signs on the side like this. Uh, but I've done this, and this is actually a blueprint because I was no way going down this whole wall placing beams. Yes, I would have done, but I decided to use a blueprint as well. So this, if you want it, will be available in the blueprint pack. Um, and then we have a walkway along here, which uh, kind of took... Why are you out? I have two lights out here. Why do I have two lights out? Excuse me, two lights? What? Do you have power? Do you give me a power pole? You must have power. You do have power, but why are you out? Hello? I'll figure that out later on. Um, but um, I've actually made some walkways that go down onto these floors. This room then comes into this room. And uh, it kind of creates a little, you know, ticket towards the fuel gens. Uh, and then we can come into here, head up the ladders if we wanted to, and uh, access a little top section, um, which then comes into here. And I've actually done this uh, to, so you can able to access the top of the the uh, the refineries if you wanted to. Kind of like a little ventilation kind of area. Mind your melon, of course. And uh, yeah, it kind of takes us into this kind of area where, you know, we can run along the refineries and whatnot. Like I said, kind of like a ventilation. It's kind of cool. And uh, I've just kind of clipped these through here. But if we actually head upstairs as well, it'll actually take us to the roof. And uh, this is what we've got here. So you can kind of see we've got these um refinery tops now popping out of the actual um machine and then we've also got these and these are pretty simple to do so when you're making these or if you want to make these all you need is just a uh, basic wall you place one down and then you can take it over here and nudge it if you want to but what i found easier to be honest than nudging it all the time is just going to architecture grab yourself a road barrier place it there like so and then just place one like this ba 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 Grab yourself the wall, hold control, it will it will replace the barrier, and you can just go bam, 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 bam. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And then all I've done is I've done that like this. And then getting the top bits can be quite finicky. And then once you've done all of that, um, I actually did it in the blueprint machine because I got carried away with these. And that's why the building started turning out to be a heatsink. So as you can tell, I've now got a blueprint, which will be available if you want to utilize it. If you wanted to as well, uh, I don't have this in the blueprint folder that you can download, but you can just go into here, change the material, and maybe you want concrete instead. So to change it all onto concrete and then save that. You might want it as a different color. Let's say you might want these to be blue uh, for your design of your factory. Um, because you might have a white factory, you might want a different accent in wall color. And then once you've got one of these, all you need to do is just, when you're in Blueprint, just make sure you hit R and you can actually start snapping these together. So I can go boop, 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 <laughs> and start placing all of these where I need to take them. And uh, by the way, yes, I went through so much steel building these things. But yeah, we're still under construction. And like I said, it's a very, very long way over the void in that direction over here. But like I said, the supports are not the best, but I've kind of done some form of support um, just so it's not floating in midair. It looks honestly not the greatest uh, and I still need to I'll get some more steel to fill in that because I was running. I've gone through so much steel. It's been absolutely insane. The next point is you can see I've kind of done these windows like literally all the way across. And uh, yes, they're also blueprinted. Uh, wait, I don't think they ones are. This is when I was doing it manually, and I was like, you know what, I need to blueprint them. So these are blueprinted as well. So if you want these, you're more than welcome to have them. Just make sure you grab them from the, uh, the Discord link. So make sure you join Discord in the uh, description, and uh, make sure you, you check in my section. And what I mean by that is when you go join the Discord over here, you can see on here on the left-hand side, this is my category right here. So anything regarding my saves, and here are the blueprints. So if you want the Mark 1 blueprints way back from 2022, you're more than welcome to get them. If you want the ones from 2023 when we made a Mark 2 highway from Season 2, and uh, yeah, I will add them all in here for you guys to download. And this is where the location of the next World Highway will be added as well. So with all of that done, I started making the whole entrance and the whole kind of design to the building by just placing signs above them. And then these over here, these are actually pipe floor holes. Because if you actually grab these and place them at the side of a wall, it kind of creates this. So I was like, you know what? Let's just add it just for the sake of it. 
and it kind of looks like you could say like flashbangs like i don't know <laughs> and then we've kind of done like a steel roof with the refineries kind of popping out here and then if we come down here into this room right here this is the entrance which you would have seen right at the start of the video and uh yes we added some mercy spheres yes it's gonna be a waste of 12 mercy spheres but i would rather waste 12 mercy spheres and making a room look this cool than just not utilizing them at all because i've already got quite a few dimensional depots uh, and all that kind of good stuff but this is what i've been up to if you've not tuned into the live stream it's been absolutely crazy over there and um if you have not tuned into the i just want to thank you all uh, sorry if you have, have tuned into the i just want to thank you all we've actually smashed records we got placed 73rd in the world and we're still there we're 73rd in the world as a twitch streamer with the more subscribers that is insane like we hit 10,000 subscribers on twitch uh, uh, my mind has been blown during this marathon for the love and support that you have shown me has been absolutely insane so i can't thank you enough that's if you've tuned into just the youtube streams the twitch streams or even just watched the videos over these past five years and i cannot thank you or express my love for you guys as much as uh, as i already have and i it just starting to sound repetitive and um i i just i i yeah so just just thank you next we uh did some um you know changes to the train line up here uh the train line now comes around here and uh we just kind of did some decoration with these fences which are new with 1.0 and i just kind of placed the signs on them and all you need to do is just when you've got a you know horizontal pillar and all you need to do to get that is grab yourself a painted beam place it down there and then grab yourself a pillar and you can just snap it like that and then just grab your sign and just rotate it with your mouse wheel and then color it and bob's your uncle and then obviously you you will need to get these and place these down you know and placing them there will make them free place but if you actually come over here how i kind of determine this is if you look to the left of the screen right now you can kind of see me trying to snap it to the edge uh and as soon as you get that lined up kind of you can then just zoop it across and it'll go over the signs and you can just kind of copy this with Control c Control v and have that there like that so bob's your uncle fanny he's your bloody aunt and then if we run down here we can kind of see i've now kind of slowly filled in this little gap down here with uh with this little walkway so it's not just an open gap anymore we've got some pipes going across we've got this little walkway with some again some more coppiced kind of beams and these are just uh, beam supports beam supports attached to the wall grab yourself a painted beam and then if you in default mode it goes straight across if you press r it goes diagonal or if you press r again it goes to freeform and i've just kind of aimed these down here and just attached them like that and uh they are hid behind a beam so as you can tell i've just got a beam place that there and then took that through and it kind of created uh, a support for it so it's not looking weirdly angled and uh as you can tell right here it's not looking as shit <laughs> And then if we go into the turbo fuel room, we had a little bit of a change. I've kind of put pipes here just for aesthetics. Um, but if we go into here, this is not red anymore. I've kind of made this and matched it with the rest of the whole system. And uh, everything's running smoothly in here. We've got turbo fuel running nice and fine and dandy. And if we actually come outside here, we can now see all of our machines are green, including the end ones, because um we ha i i've discovered i have discovered what is causing a lot of people's fluid issues and this is just from many many science tests over the years and all this kind of stuff i'm going to show you in this video just in case you don't know or you've not been in the live streams and heard it about 200 times and if you have been in the live streams you're going to hear it one more time and um what this is i'm going to show you the problem when it comes to pipes because as you know, my whole system was fine. It's all uh, operational. But the end ones, as always, are never kind of filling. The only change that I've been made, and I have submitted this now to the developers. They are going to be looking at it at some point. Uh, and that is pipeline junctions. You might have heard me talk about this in the previous season, but it seems to be a still an issue in 1.0. And what must that be, Mr. Bits? Well, when you've got a pipe like this, you put down a pipeline junction a lot of us are going to put our pipes down here and hold control and snap it to buildings right well that is where the problem is so let's put this down here and then we're going to put this down right 
here. So now, it all looks fine and dandy. But there is a hidden enemy. Well, let me show you. If you press F and aim at this pipe, look what's happening. You see how this pipe is going halfway through this junction right there? Well, that's causing an excess pipe that we don't actually need. And it's causing some fluid issues. So what you now need to do, and I know a lot of you are probably looking at this going, that's what I've done. So tell me what's going to happen. And then I guarantee you will more than likely go through all your factories and change this and it'll fix a lot of your problems. So you can see it right there. If we go into this, look at the length of this 10.7 cubic meters. But now if I were to remove this pipe and reconnect it from the actual junction to here, look where it's connecting to now. You see where it's connecting to now? It's connecting to the ports of the junction. But it's also changed the amount in the pipe to eight cubic meters. Not is this only going to help with your, you know, throughput going towards the machines on the end, let's say, for example, just, just in general heating up because you are removing cubic meters out of your pipe. That is not necessary because this classes as a teleporter. This, what I mean by teleporter, it teleports the liquid from... <laughs> Ignore that. Um, I can't ignore it. It's going to annoy me. <laughs> it teleports the liquids from here to here. You don't want this excess pipe going through here and connecting at this point and going to there. So what I recommend doing going forward is make the pipeline junctions first. If, if you have already got pipeline junctions down or you need to create angled ones, and what I mean is by placing these down here, jumping them across here like this and lifting that up, and then you'll get these ones and hold control and, you know, do a... You don't need to hold control, you just middle mouse button. And you need to do angles. Make sure you delete the pipe on either side and then reconnect it again if you want to do angled ones. Like so. This problem and just changing this right here has fixed so many community members in the live streams fluids because of this system, right? Um, and this has now been proven in my build and in many of the community members in the live streams build that this has fixed so many of their fluid issues by just placing these junctions down first or replacing the pipes that are attached because you did do this mode right here. So doing that, it does help with the floor because you are reducing excess space. Because if you think about it, right, if you've got a very, very, very long pipe and you're doing this all the way you know from multiple things the amount of like if you think about it that was two point something right there right if you're doing that along a you know along of 40 refineries that added up is going to be times 40 because it's going to be going to 40 machines that's going to be you know quite a bit of uh cubic meters that you've got excess in your pipe that you do not need so with that out the way this design is now Completo, I'm going to leave you on that little bombshell. Um, so um, thank you so much for watching. And um, this is how the whole designs come out. So if you haven't tuned into the live stream already, I uh, highly recommend it. It's a blast. It could be nice and chill at some points. It can be chaotic. Sometimes you're just going to embrace it. And hopefully I can be your background noise whilst you're working. So without further ado, as always, check out my content right here. And I will see you in the next video.